Yes, my son. Um, why did it? Why did it put the issue? Yes. Yes. You see, this is we are following the commandment as given by God Almighty to the Holy Prophet Moses. If you remember, in the Old Testament we read that when Moses was on Mount Sinai, God spoke to him and he said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. In respect of that commandment, we Muslims, we take off our shoes. And if there was much time, the man would have explained that before we go in for prayer, we make ablution. In other words, all the exposed parts of the body are being washed. The hands, the feet, the nostrils, the nape of the neck, gargling the mouth, brushing the teeth. This the Muslim does five times a day, every day of the year. The one who is particular with his prayers. And purely from the hygienic point of view, no one is going to find fault with the person who washes himself five times a day. It's a good hygienic practice. Everybody agrees. <laughs> Secondly, this ablution serves a certain psychological purposes, meaning mentally it's preparing us for prayer. We are washing not because we are dirty. We might have just had a shower. But now we are going through a formality that we attune ourselves psychologically. We are preparing ourselves that we are going to meet our Lord. We are going to stand before Him. And thirdly, this is also another commandment given by God Almighty to the Holy Prophet Moses. In the book of Exodus, that is the second book of the Bible, it is written, And Moses and Aaron and their sons washed their hands and their feet thereat. When they went into the tent of the congregation, they washed as the Lord commanded Moses. So we Muslims are still fulfilling another biblical commandment. Though we haven't got the label of a Jew, nor yet that of a Christian. Yet in our humility we claim that we are more Jewish than the Jews and more Christians than the Christians. In this, that we are trying to follow in the footsteps of the prophets. So, in every aspect of the Muslim prayer, you see, if you had been at prayer time, you would have watched the Muslim at actually at prayer. We go into different positions, facing the direction of Mecca. We say Allahu Akbar, meaning Allah is the greatest. With folded arms, we read chapters and verses from the Holy Quran, celebrating the praises of God. And we go into different postures. And in every posture, we celebrate His praises. Reaching the ultimate, that we go down to the ground with the forehead touching the earth. In that position, we say, Subhana Rabbi al-A'la, Subhana Rabbi al-A'la, Subhana Rabbi al-A'la. Which is in Arabic, which means glory to God in the highest, glory to God in the highest, glory to God in the highest. The highest part of man goes down to the lowest before his maker, and we praise him to the highest. This is the form of our prayer. And this is also biblical. Because this is how all the prophets prayed. When I say all the prophets prayed, it sounds like a sweep, sweeping generalization. But it is not so. If you have been reading your own holy scriptures, you will be able to confirm what I'm going to quote to you now. And I quote from the Old Testament. It reads, And Abraham fell on his face and prayed to God. And it reads again, And Moses and Aaron fell on their faces and prayed to God. And again, And Joshua fell on his face and prayed to God. When we come to the New Testament, we learn that Jesus Christ, towards his last days on earth, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane with his disciples. And he said, wait and watch, look out, pass off, because the Jews were after his life. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed to God, O my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass away from me, meaning remove the difficulty from me, but not as I will, but as thou wilt. And then I leave it to you. I want you to save me, my Lord. But if it is your will, whatever your will, I am prepared to submit. One word for that in the Islamic language is a Muslim. He said, I am a Muslim. A Muslim is one who submits his will to the will of God. He submitted. Whatever you want to do, I am prepared to do. But how did he do it? And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed to God. I have been asking Westerners, how does a man fall on his face and pray? Except the way we Muslims do. Can a circus acrobat do any better than that? Falling on your face and praying. Can you imagine another way of falling on your face? And Abraham, and Moses, and Aaron, and Joshua, and Jesus, and Muhammad. They all fell on their faces, faces and prayed to God. But the modern gentleman is more worried about the creases on his trousers than humbling before God. The Americans, however, 
are learning what they call transcendental meditation, a word two yards long from the Hindus, which is the common property of every Jew, every Christian, and every Muslim, if they only followed in the footsteps of their own prophets. But we are cleverer than they, aren't we? So we sit on our backsides and we tell God what to do, and little wonder he's not listening. So we are thinking that maybe God is deaf, or maybe that he's, de he's dead. I say he's neither deaf nor dead. There is a way of approach which the spiritual physicians of mankind, they taught us. And we would do well to follow them. Abraham, and Moses, and Aaron, and Joshua, and Jesus, and they all fell on their faces and prayed. This is the humblest posture that you can reach on this earthly existence before the Lord. So this was the form of our prayer, but if you were there at prayer time, you would have been able to watch all these things and you could have asked further questions. But, yes, my son. No.